but like I said, we kind of know what this battle is going to be. Heavyweight match. Uh, two teams going to run the ball. The biggest thing is just winning the game, winning the next game, being one another this week. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. With the head coach, I'm Mike Keith. The bye week in the Titans rearview mirror, but yesterday, a Monday practice for the Titans, Mike. Yeah, I thought it was a great day. I thought guys came in from the break, didn't really know what to expect. Uh, I could go in different ways and thought they came in with some energy. I thought they were ready to meet. I thought they were ready to practice. Uh, there was a, an urgency, so we're excited to get back out on the field tomorrow. Uh, continue our preparation towards Indianapolis. Of course, there was other news yesterday coming out in that the Titans and the mayor of Nashville, John Cooper, have agreed in principle to a lease on a new stadium for the Tennessee Titans. Titans president and CEO Burke Nihill was kind enough to take some time with me to discuss specifics of the new stadium. Here's that on the Mike Vrabel Show. It is an exciting day, Mike. We have reached an agreement with Mayor Cooper with respect to a new stadium that would be built on the east bank of the Cumberland River. We're picturing a facility of about 60,000 capacity. It would be an enclosed facility. And I think what is probably exciting news for Titans fans, this lease would keep the Titans in Nashville and Tennessee for another generation. We're looking at a 30 year lease for this new facility. So just for specifics, where exactly is the new stadium set to be built? It would be built on our current stadium campus. So if our stadium today is, is up towards the riverfront, the stadium would be built further back towards the east and between the current stadium and the highway. So safe to say parking is going to be impacted. Parking will be impacted. And we know that that's a pain point for our fans. And so we've been working really hard already to identify parking alternatives, transportation alternatives, to make coming to Nissan Stadium a great experience even with that disruption. We will communicate, we will over communicate <laughs> those solutions. Every city that has built a new enclosed stadium has gotten a Super Bowl. You're saying that would be your expectation for our new stadium? Yeah, absolutely, that would be my expectation. The NFL came to Nashville in 2019, and frankly, they, they took a chance when they brought the draft here. Only major cities had gotten uh, the NFL's biggest events up until that point, and there's no question that Nashville delivered and in spades. And so those same people, the, the events programmers uh, for the NFL, uh, they took notice. And there's no doubt in my mind that the NFL would come to Nashville with a Super Bowl. All right, so the number one question that I've gotten from Titans fans outside of, are we gonna host the Super Bowl? Is what about PSLs? What do you expect the role of PSLs to be in the building of the new stadium? For a long time, PSLs have been a reality of construction projects of this scale. And so PSLs will be a part of this project as well. That said, it's been critically important to Amy. It's been critically important to the organization as a whole that we find a way to honor existing PSL holders. The PSL holders, some of whom uh, purchased their PSLs back in the late 90s, they're the reason why we're here. And, and they have been loyal to this organization for decades. And there is just no scenario in Amy's mind where we don't honor them as part of a transition into a new building. What that looks like, uh, we're still working through some of the details, but we are committed to giving every PSL holder a credit to purchase a new PSL in a new building that is in line with their original investment and their original PSL. Again, a lot of details to be worked through, and we know how important it is to communicate with our existing PSL holders as soon as we have all of those details, and we will very, very soon. 
So how soon do we start construction? <laughs> well, you know, to not count our chickens, again, there is this there's this city process sure. that, that will be ongoing. And so that will be the focus over the next few months, is both the legislative process and the community outreach and, and, and input gathering process. If all of that were to go according to plan, next fall is probably the earliest that construction would actually be. There's a design process that needs to continue. There's a procurement process that needs to begin. And so next fall to winter is probably the earliest that construction would begin. All right, so if that's when construction starts, when will it be completed? Our goal has always been 2026. We're not going to put an arbitrary date on completion that would ultimately result in a construction process that is hurried or a design process that is hurried. And so if that means that ultimately the first games and first events aren't hosted at the stadium until 27 and not 26, we will take a responsible approach to managing that construction schedule. Titans president and CEO Burke Nihill, our interview actually went quite a bit longer than that. If you want to watch the whole thing, we invite you to go to TennesseeTitans.com and we've got the whole thing up there for you. Mike Vrabel, an exciting day, an exciting announcement for the organization and our great fan base. Absolutely. And I think the biggest thing that I took away from Burke's message there was the loyalty to the original PSLs. I think that that means a lot to, to, to Amy, to our ownership, to the organization, those people that got us here to where we are now. It is an exciting time. It's going to be amazing to, to watch this thing um, unfold. And, and you know we have a job to do in the interim you know, is to make sure that we're ready to go in that thing and, you know, continue this this winning organization. And keep that home field advantage at Nissan Stadium. Absolutely. And starts on Sunday against the Colts. But up next, Mike Vrabel's six-pack. What the Titans need to do more of. Great examples coming up as they play their last 12 games. The Mike Vrabel Show continues after this. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4 from the Bet MGM studio. Let's talk about Mike Vrabel's six pack. And of course, it's a bi week edition of the six pack. It's a bi week man, edition of the six pack. Some good plays on here. Yes, what we've done is we've said, here are things we want to see more <laughs> of going more. forward because we've got to come up with a six pack. As a matter of fact, it's in the law. So this is how we've done it. Let's take a look at some plays we'd like to see a lot more of over the last 12 games to. Help the Titans continue. I think we all would, especially down here in the red zone. You see that pack in the paint right there. You know, similar to what we were able to do in Washington. Um, you know, Kevin catches the tip ball. Actually, he's making a heck of a return. I'd like to see some guys block a little bit better. But, but again, a lot of bodies in there, a lot of hands. Um, <clears throat> you know, Kevin's able to catch the tip pass. So we're definitely going to need to see more stops in the red zone. And if we want to turn it over down there, that would be great, too. That would be great. Good red zone defense and good red zone offense. How about a little more pass rush and taking the football away like this play from October 2nd? This is just making sure now that you know, we've got good on good right here. Danico, uh, Mario Williams working a pass rush game, you know, beating Nelson and, and uh, Raymond over there on the left side and understanding how we have to be able to affect the quarterback into the middle of the pocket. Um, you know, Danico's ability to rush inside and outside, you know, has really helped us throughout the, uh, you know, the course of the season so far. So the Titans getting after the quarterback, making plays, getting that pressure with a four-man rush, not just having to blitz. We got a nice little punt return right here, Mike. You get Bobby Trees making guys miss, guys going up to the second level. You know, they're backed up. We stopped them. Complimentary football. We've talked about this. You know, I think nobody loves to see it more than you do. You, you talk about it. So that's complimentary football. We backed them up. We got to stop. Big 20-yard punt return, two first downs, balls in midfield. We go in and score. Big right before the half, too. Absolutely. That was That's another great point. Able to get a first down, kick a field goal. You know, that that's the stuff that we talk about. That's the stuff we're going to need more of. Ended up being the winning points in the ball game. All right, play number four from the six-pack. Let's see what comes up. Let's see what we have here. Oh, there we go. We got Ryan. We got Ryan Tannehill to Chig. And Ryan progresses through. You see a clean pocket. You know, it starts to get dirty. Ryan's tough as nails. He stands in there. He works through his progression. 
that's the hit that took Leonard out there for a couple weeks. Thank gosh, Chig wasn't in the middle of it. And, you know, he's able to progress through. You see Ryan step up, change his arm angle down there in the red zone. Similar to the play we saw earlier with the, the Raiders, we're able to complete it and score a touchdown in tight windows down there. Is Chig Okonkwo ready to do more? Well, you know what I mean? I think he is, and he's trying to, to do more. He's done more on special teams. Talked about that. Uh, I think he begin, continues to build confidence. You know, we just have to find a place for him. You know, um, you know, your running back's bigger than, than one of your tight ends. So we yeah. just have to continue to find places for him, and we will. I like how you did that, because speaking of the big running back, how about a little of the king? This is my fifth year doing this show. Mike. You are so I'm good doing. at this TV thing. We get Derek going here in the second level. We get him into his fourth or fifth step. You see him high-stepping. Man, did he want to score right there. But... This is us going, uh, stringing some plays together, uh, everybody blocking, you see the stiff arms, see the ball security, all those things that we talk about uh, that we're gonna need. We're gonna need to be efficient when we run it, we're gonna run it, and, and we have to continue to make some of these explosive gains, these double digit runs. Feels like he's getting stronger, Mike. I, I love where he's at. I, I think that he's taken all the coaching points that we've had as far as pressing and landmarks and. I mean, he's close. I mean, he's had a couple close ones where, you know, in the past, maybe that is a, is a home run. And, and I'm confident that, that those are going to be there and they're in there. And he's, he's working hard. Um, he's caught the ball extremely well. And, uh, and we're, I'm excited to see where he is after this bye week. Let's end with some good punt coverage, shall we? Why not? All right. Let's see what comes up. All right. So Ryan Stonehouse, the outstanding young punter. This is a 66-yarder. Look at it's this like he coverage. barely swings. I know crazy it's like me on the golf course nice easy swing it goes far but the other thing is i like is i like the punt coverage okay these guys have figured out how to cover the punts they're gonna have to run 60 yards cover some ground make sure they're casting a net and that's flipping field position that is flipping field position undoubtedly outstanding job by the young punter ryan stonehouse and the titans with the swarm Want to see more of that. Those are six plays we want to see more of from Mike Brable's six-pack. Coming up, time to know your foe, the aforementioned Indianapolis Colts. Next. When we left the Indianapolis Colts, they were 1-2-1. One, and one. They're now 3-2-1. and one. And so as they come to Nashville and we play Know the Foe, we see a team that will be here at noon on Sunday after beating Jacksonville. Matt Ryan hooking up with Michael Pittman Jr. a bunch in that win. Yeah, this is a resilient group, Mike. Make sure we understand that. Won three out of the last four. They've scored uh, the winning or tying points with less than 30 seconds in all three of those games. So they're never going to be out of it. Uh, we're going to have to just, just stick and stay the course and be ready to play. You know, 60 or 70 minutes. But Pittman, obviously, a big factor in what they're doing. Big target. Uh, they got the ball out of there quick. Whoever is going to be in there, whether it's Jackson, Hines, or obviously Taylor, they're going to want to run the football. Um, but they, they went on the ball. They went some no huddle. And, and you can see, you know, Matt Ryan was able to get the ball out. And, and really, they didn't – 58 times, they didn't have one sack. That's amazing considering the problems that they had had. Yeah, I, I hope that that doesn't happen with us. All right. I, I don't want to see the next day. Let's look at the rest of the Know Your Foe information from the Indianapolis Colts. And in talking about them, Alec Pierce, who had the game-winning touchdown, and then you move to defense, Bobby O'Karake, Grover Stewart, DeForest Buckner. They've got Franklin a lot of weapons. leading the yeah. team in tackles, leading the league in tackles. Pierce, young player, starting to come on. Tight ends down in the red zone, got great size, defense, Buckner, athletic. It's a fast defense. We're going to have our hands full. One of the fastest overall teams that you play. Yep. You know, I think that they do have some speed, and, um, you know, that's how they've decided to build their team. All right. When we come back, we've got Epic Western's genuine Titan. It's a gentleman who earlier today officially retired. One of our favorites, number 82 himself, Delaney Walker. One of the great things about this job is getting to call the games of super players, guys who are pros who do it the absolute right way. One of those guys for the Tennessee Titans, Delaney Walker, a tight end, 
who came over in the midst of a career that took a very different turn when he got to Nashville. Earlier today, he announced his retirement officially as a Tennessee Titan. That was a big thrill for us. So tonight on the Mike Vrabel Show, we honor him as Epic Western's genuine Titan. Here's Amy Wells. On March 13th, 2013, the Tennessee Titans switched tight ends. Jared Cook left for a huge free agent deal with the Rams. It was a blow as Cook was just coming into his own as a playmaker. To replace Cook, the Titans signed a soon-to-be 29-year-old former San Francisco 49er who wasn't always a tight end. He had played seven seasons in the Bay Area and had caught just 123 passes. He was known for his blocking and special teams play more than his receiving. Fan reaction to his signing was muted at best. But his signing proved to be one of the best in Titans history. I'm talking, of course, about Delaney Walker. Over the next five seasons, he averaged 71 catches per season and scored 26 touchdowns. Delaney Walker made three straight Pro Bowl appearances and was the offensive MVP of the 2018 Pro Bowl. Floats it down the middle. Walker at the five. Walker in the end zone. Touchdown, Titans! When Titans greats of both past and present unveiled the Titans' new uniform in April 2018, Walker was on the stage in downtown Nashville giving the Titans' new look its best possible look. Off the field, he made a huge difference, not just in Tennessee, but also in California, as he made the fight against drunk driving his number one mission. For his efforts, Delaney Walker was the Tennessee Titans 2015 Walter Payton Man of the Year. So when Delaney Walker was injured in the 2018 season opener at Miami, Titans fans were crushed because they didn't just love the player, they loved the person. Delaney Walker meant more than just being the guy in the number 82 jersey. He stood for excellence in good times and bad and became one of the faces of the franchise. His return for the 2019 season was hailed as a triumph, and his performance in a season-opening thrashing of the Cleveland Browns provided a lasting memory. Toughness, determination, playmaking skill, the willingness to do whatever was needed to help the team improve and win. All of those things mark Delaney Walker's seven-year run with the two-tone blue. When you talk about genuine Titans over the last quarter century, Delaney Walker has to be at the top of the list. Delaney Walker retiring today as a Titan. Mike Vrabel, you didn't have a chance to coach him long. Not long. He made a huge impact on me. I appreciate, uh, you know, sometimes veteran players and a new coaching staff and you know, he embraced us and, and what we were about and, and just his professionalism. And, you know, I learned a lot from him each and every day. So a fantastic career as a self-made player uh, who really just, you know, earned his way and, and, and got everything that he deserved. He will be the 12th Titan on Sunday, along with former Oilers quarterback Dan Pastorini. We look forward to seeing all of those guys from the Oilers Titans history against the Indianapolis Colts at Nissan Stadium. When we come back, it's time to talk Nissan Keys. We know the opponent. It's Indianapolis. How do the Titans beat them Sunday at Nissan Stadium? This guy will tell you next. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4 from the Bet MGM studio. Time now for the Nissan Keys. Round two against the Colts. Let's start with... Hey, let's start with running the ball. How about that? Well, we have to. I mean, you know, one of our best players, if not our best player week in and week out, is Derrick Henry. You know, we have to make sure that we're doing everything that we can uh, to get him going, and it opens up everything else. Um, takes all 11, you know, but I think Derrick's close, and, you know, certainly in these divisional games, uh, you're going to have to send a, set a tempo and set the, 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 what the game is going to look like with some physicality in the run game. Derrick Henry, 80 touches in the last three Titans victories. Key number two, be a drive starter. What do you mean by well, that? Well, I mean, the defense and the offense really gets started with special teams. So we're trying to get these guys to realize that they're the first play of the series. So whether we're punting the football, you know, we have to go down there and we have to be the first drive on defense. If we're returning the football on kickoff return, punt return, 
this is that's the first offensive play, and they can really get things going and set the table for us. Finally, I mean, this has to be stop the run, doesn't it? Key number three. Well, yep. when when you play the Colts, and I think with a healthy Jonathan Taylor and Hines, I think they're going to find a way to to want to run the ball. And I think if you can stop it, then it opens up so many different avenues for the, the ability to affect the quarterback. We've got to be great tacklers. Quick game, getting the guys, uh, athletes, the ball in space. We're going to have to tackle and, and limit the X plays. It's for first place in the AFC South. Noon coming up this Sunday at Nissan Stadium. The Titans and the Colts. For head coach Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.